Well, it seems investigators in the Lacey Peterson case had a mountain of potential evidence and didn't even know it in court papers. Authorities said they unknowingly recorded as many as 176 more phone calls by Scott Peterson. Police say they have yet to listen to those calls. They're asking the judge how they should proceed. So you may be asking yourself how someone could have recorded 176 phone calls and not know it. The answer is apparently technologically somewhat complex. And to put it into non-complex language, I'm joined now by Robert Mann, president of Worldwide Intelligence Network. Mr. Mann, thank you very much for coming on the program. Pleasure, Dan. All right, so explain to me, in layperson's terms, how it is the authorities could be wiretapping Scott Peterson's phone for weeks and now suddenly come forward and say, hey, you know what, guys? There are actually 176 more calls that we didn't even know we had. The number sounds large, but in reality, according to the information that I've been able to gather, there were over 3,800 conversations that apparently were recorded. That's a tremendous amount of conversations within the period of one month. As far as the 176 that they didn't know about, it is understandable when there is a peculiarity involved in the equipment that is doing the recording. To understand how the equipment works, let me just start from the beginning. There is technology today, and it was a law passed and implemented as recently as June of 2000, where all devices such as pagers, cell phones, landlines would have to be developed by the manufacturers to have a dual purpose, one for the recipient to be able to hear and the other for law enforcement to be able to hear. So when this technology was incorporated, and the technology begins to work as in the Peterson situation, there is devices that are doing the recording off-site. Uh -huh. And the off-site recording is being uh, taken down by instruments. And I understand that AT&T had a glitch in their technology, which caused a lot of the recordings to be recorded without the knowledge of the people that were supervising the instrument taking right. in the recordings. All right, fair enough. Ted Simon, is that fodder for the defense? Well, it probably will be because in, uh, you know, a hard wire or this type of intercept is the most strictly enforced because it's the most invasive. And what happens, the court imposes an intercept order and the government has to abide by it. And it directs the authorities to listen, you know, restrict the monitoring as to certain parties, restrict the monitoring as to certain yeah. types of conversations, and, and they have to minimize. So they're supposed to be listening so they can turn the machine off and not hear what they're not supposed to hear. Now, the flip side of that, someone's going to say, well, we didn't hear any of this. And that's just something that may have happened, but it's hard to believe. They probably should take all the information, turn it over to the defense, and let them listen to it first. Gloria, what do you make of this? Well, I think what, what occurred was exactly what should have occurred. As soon as it was, was, was brought to Mr. Jacobson's attention, according to reports uh, in the news, uh, Mr. Jacobson being the person who was yeah. to monitor the wiretaps, he immediately, uh, after hearing just a few seconds of somebody with a southern drawl, realized that he hadn't heard these conversations before and turned it over to the yeah, court. But, but, what but, but more should no, anybody is, do? But, it's not his fault that he hadn't heard it before. But, right, but, they were in the computer server. That's fine. It may not be his fault. Order. It may not be his fault, but when there's going to be an entire hearing Damn. on the question of whether this wiretapping was done properly, this doesn't seem to help the, the prosecution mm -hmm. that, in essence, they're going to be saying, you know what, we didn't quite understand how our technology works. No, Dan, here, here's what happened here. What, this is computerized, and the monitor who is listening to the tape then turns the recording on. Technology did not signal the monitor to turn the recording on. They find out there are, are out of 4,000 calls, 176, that they were never signaled to listen to. Right. So they didn't listen. So what is the harm? No harm, no foul. But I'm, again, the judge will now listen to those tapes and decide whether or not they are privileged, non-privileged, and by the way, there may even be a smoking gun in there for the prosecution. No one's been harmed here, and a judge will literally listen from but starting But I would finish. agree with you, Janine, if it weren't going to be the case that, that the issue that this court is going to decide in, in the very near future is going to be, did they wiretap properly? Did they sufficiently ignore, for example, attorney-client conversations, etc.? Oh. And this does make you wonder, no, did what? they know what they were doing? Well, there's no what reason to wonder. wonder is that Why, Gloria? Why is there no reason to wonder? There's no reason to wonder because it can be explained 
uh, uh, you know, as an issue of technology. You know, there's no malicious intent here. But and it's I don't not know always about intent. Try it, to it, suggest it or not. Go ahead, Except that there's an intercept order that's put in place in all these cases, and the government has to abide by it. And one of those things is they're supposed to listen and then turn off when they're not supposed to listen. So that means they were just wholly abrogating their duty. You're, you're, Ted, you're mixing up two separate issues. We're talking about things that they didn't even listen to but, because technology didn't signal them to listen to the conversation. But, Jeanine, as you know, the intercept order directs the government how they're supposed to monitor conversations Should and how they're supposed to listen and turn them off. How to do their job? But no, but the question is going to be the question is going to be what the judge told right. the government to do. Let me and ask Mr. Mann, let a, me ask Mr. Mann a non-legal question. Is this trouble? I don't think so. There's no. technology involved here and whenever you use technology, be it given permission by the courts, it can go haywire. And of 176 conversations out of 3,800, it's not terribly unreasonable to think for just a moment that perhaps the person monitoring the machine where the recording is being done might have left a disc under a piece of paper by accident as he took the other disc to a prosecutor that, and then realized. But you when know, he you did know, realize that, you know, Dan, every when time you're, that when happens you're in a criminal it, case, hang on a second. Every time that happens in a criminal case, and look, and very often it is accidental, and often it is very explainable. But, you know, remember, aha, Mr. Fung, in the O.J. Simpson case, it was the same sort of issue, which was that Dennis Fung, the criminalist, had accidentally left something in one place, and it becomes the biggest deal in the world. But this is very different, because apparently, according to news reports, this, uh, the fact that these calls were in there and the server was brought to the attention of uh, the, uh, the person who was supposed to monitor the calls by the software expert. So uh, I, there may not even have been any negligence here, let alone any malicious intent. But and you're missing the point. The point is the judge sets an order that tells the government how to operate these, these wiretaps. But they don't tell them techno technologically But they're to supposed it, to be listening and filling out logs and indicating what they've heard so they can minimize phone right. calls, that they can complete, they can say whether or not they've well, yeah, what do you, completed their investigation. I, what do you do? What do you reports. do? Ten seconds. What do you do when he's, uh, Scott Peterson is talking to his attorney? You need to listen to that conversation for and, a few seconds and to determine whether or All not right. it should be turned off. Mr. Mann, I've got to wrap it up. Janine Pirro, Ted Simon, Gloria Allred, Robert Mann, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back here tomorrow at 9 p.m.